So now we're on the same page of whether it's needed or not. Where, where do you go from there? Well, if if somebody is willing to say, okay, I get that it's a command, uh, typically they're going to start throwing out, um, we can obey God's commands, but but to, to add anything to grace is a work of the flesh. And so they're probably not going to be convinced that baptism is necessary for salvation. They'll just say that it's a command. Um, and, and we'll talk about where they go with that for number five, which is a believer's baptism. But this one is, is essential because if somebody's going to say baptism is a work of the flesh, uh, then it's kind of like their trump card. Ha, you can't do anything because it's a work of the flesh. So I typically bring up Ephesians 2 verse 8 very early in these conversations. It's going to come up at some point anyway. Right. And so I tell them we're not saved by works, Ephesians 2 verse 8. And by taking ownership of that verse, it can't be weaponized against what we teach on baptism because it's simply true. We're, we agree. We're not saved by works. I don't want to just lob a scripture and they lob a scripture and we just like pew, 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 get in this fight. I want to, when somebody says we're not saved by works, I want to say, amen. You are so right. We're not saved by works. But here's a couple of scriptures. I want, I want to actually read them. So how about you read for me in Colossians 2, verse 11 and 12. And I'm going to flip over to Titus chapter 3, verse 4 through 7. And uh, we'll make some comments on them. So go ahead whenever you're there. Colossians 2, 11 and 12. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Yeah, so this is uh, this baptism... Um, it's called the circumcision of Christ. And it's the thing that, that cuts sin out of our life and puts us into Christ, as Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 talks about. It goes in conjunction with what I'm going to read to you in Titus chapter 3, uh, verse 4. It says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness. Ooh, I love that. Don't you just, it, it, it's the perfect scripture to go along with Ephesians 2. It de-weaponizes that scripture because Paul write, wrote both of these. And he says, it's not, salvation is not by works that we've done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. Well, what's according to his mercy? Two things, the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. And that lines up with Acts 2.38. We're baptized for the remission of sins and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right? It lines up with Jesus in John chapter 3. Unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is consistent through the New Testament that it's not a work of the flesh. It is an act of faith that is obeying what God has graciously asked us to do. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of times people may not agree with that, and, and they've just been kind of indoctrinated with Ephesians 2, 8, works, works, works. But the Bible seems to be very consistent that it's an act of faith that we do to obey God. And when it's compared to circumcision, the circumcision of Christ, it kind of makes you think of, of what circumcision was for people in the Old Testament. And it was the sign that you were one of God's people. Mm -hmm. um, that was the sign that was given to Abraham. Uh, that all the, the men had to, to do that, and that was their sign of the covenant. And Jesus brought in a new covenant, and this seems to be what his sign was that he chose. Yeah, um, that's a great point. No Jew uh, decided they didn't want to be circumcised because they felt like it would take away from their relationship with God. In fact, uh, you know, the irony is that they relied so much on their circumcision that they couldn't see God's grace, which is a warning to people in the Church of Christ who rely so much on baptism that they forget that there's something bigger than baptism. We're going to talk about that in the conclusion. But there, it's more than baptism. It's about appreciating that God has, has called us to be different. But like you're saying, that thing that separates us from the world and puts us in Christ you know, in the old law, it was circumcision, but now it's baptism. I'm, I'm thinking about in verse 12 in Colossians 2. It says, 
having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. So God's the one at work. This is God's work. And again, all we're trying to do is help people see whenever they're kind of locked in on uh, it's a work, it's a work, it's a work, we say it's God's work. And we are accomplishing God's work through faith. So it's God's work and the work of the person who's having to lower you down right. and lift you back up. <laughs> yeah. Of of the three parties of God who assigned it, the one who is baptizing you and you getting dipped, you're doing the least. 